of Las Vegas. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Interconnect 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now your host, John Curry and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for exclusive coverage of IBM Interconnect 2016. This is The Cube, Silicon Angle's flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Dave Vellante, and we're excited to have our youngest guest we've ever had on theCUBE in our sixth year, seventh year doing it, Tanmay Bakshay, who's the star of the show, coding since age five. Welcome to theCUBE. Hello. Okay, so how, when was the first time you wrote code? Uh, well, actually I was five, uh, and I started with Fox Pro programming uh, on a really old computer, forgot who manufactured it in general, with my dad's help. All right, so how do you feel with all these old people around you like us, coding oh, back in the great. old days? Yeah. You're the next generation, so how do you feel about the, all this, the uh, celebrity status? Yeah. You're famous on YouTube, great, yeah. a lot of people love your videos, you've been a great teacher. Yeah. yeah, I love to help people, uh, so it feels great, yeah. What was the, what was the um, how many videos have you posted now? Uh, I have around 80 videos. Yeah. 80? 80, yes. All sort of, sort of self-help, programming. Yes. programming, here's yeah. how to. Yes, correct. And, uh, and your community is growing, I presume. Yes. <laughs> is your dad a programmer? Uh, he, he does work as a programmer, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So is that how you first yeah, got Yeah, that's interested? how I first got into programming. But now sometimes I even uh, teach my dad programming. You do. With, you, for you, iOS and the, stuff, the, the, yeah. Teaching the teacher, is yeah. that right? Oh, when, when did you surpass your dad in, in, the, in the programming? Uh, really, uh, when I was around nine, uh, my first iOS app, T-Tables, uh, which helps you learn multiplication tables, was accepted into the iOS app store. Uh, and so uh, right after that, uh, I started using the internet as a tool uh, to basically learn programming, and at that point, uh, I just started learning more and more, yeah. And you like teaching people too, so not only do you develop, you also are teaching folks, and, and you like that. Yes, yes. All right, so when was the last time you pushed code? This morning, today, yes, nine o'clock? This morning, yeah, <laughs> a for update, us. Today, right? a little agile. Yeah, a little update for Ask Tim, and it allows you to ask another question from the result page. All right, so what's cool about the, the, the current stuff you're seeing here? Are you playing with Watson at all? Is Watson integrating yes, some of the things you're doing? Uh, actually, I use Watson uh, in the latest app that I've developed, which I was actually presenting yesterday at the Cloud Expo. Uh, it's called Ask Tanme. Uh, and so basically, it, you can ask it person or organization questions like, who is the CEO of IBM? Uh, and it should be able to answer them. Uh, and so it does use IBM Watson's APIs, uh, in this case, relationship extraction and the natural language classifier. Are you using Bluemix at all? Yes. Uh, what do you think about Bluemix? Uh, I love Bluemix. It's really easy to use uh, the uh, Watson APIs, containers, and stuff. I, I like so it. So as a developer, you feel like the services, the richness of the services in Bluemix sort of satisfy your, your general needs? And yes. What, what, what more would you like to see out of, out of Bluemix? Well, mainly out of Bluemix, uh, Nothing that I can think off the top of my head, but for Watson, uh, I really want more sort of APIs. I uh, don't have anything in general uh, in specific that I can think of, but more IBM Watson APIs would be uh, great. So you've also done some development for wearables, right? Uh, Apple Watch, is that right? Or? Yes, uh, I uh, have developed apps uh, that are, uh, actually I have a T-Guess app, it's a number guessing game app for the Apple Watch and iPhone on the App Store. Uh, I also have developed for Mac OS X, uh, but I don't have any apps on the App Store for that yet. What do you What do you think about the whole wearables thing? I remember when Google Glass came out, John actually went and got one of the first Google Glass. I remember your son Alec was wearing it at his graduation, and, but they were sort of, you know, kind of not, they were sort of awkward, you know, it didn't, and people, I don't know, you have an, an Apple Watch. Well, the Watch, developer kit was pretty weak at the time. It was, I mean, I thought it was a great first version. I mean, I loved but it. But it's, it's sandbox stuff, but so what do, you, what do you think about, you know, wearables, the development environment, are you encouraged about the future of them? Do they have a long way to go? Give us your yes. thoughts on that, Tanmay. Well, to begin, first of all, on the Apple Watch, um, I love uh, pretty much the portability of these sorts of devices. Uh, and there's one more, more thing that I, d I want, sort of like the Apple Watch and the Google Glass. It would be best if they were independent devices instead of connected to your phones. Uh, they could be uh, sort of like a Mac and an iPhone. They can share data with each other. But 
they shouldn't have to depend on each other. That's one thing that I'm not too much of a fan of about them. So, it, I mean, my inference is that's a form factor related. You, only, you can only do so yes, much on, the, on right, a watch. But, but do you, I mean, I know there's a lot going on in Silicon Valley with the future of the way in which we, you know, communicate. I just wonder, as a young person, right, you, you, you've always been, had a device like this, right, at yeah. your, your disposal, but it seems to me that using our thumbs to communicate to these devices is, doesn't seem to be the right way. He's so, asking the AI question. Yeah, so, <laughs> exactly, is, is, is the future, you know, artificial intelligence, what do you envision as a, as a developer? How are we going to communicate with these devices in the future? Well, first of all, let me just tell you, a computer's uh, sort of power is not with natural language, it's with math. Uh, because a, a human uh, is better at sort of talking to people like we are right now, not at sort of math. Or uh, It would be harder for a human to do math, but a computer can do math easier. Natural language it can't do whatsoever. Uh, and so, First of all, in order to program in even Ask Tanmay, uh, it would take a lot of code. Uh, and so uh, what I can really think of is we, uh, for the next, I don't know how many years, it's going to take a long time to get to the sort of uh, really powerful question and answering systems uh, that can answer with 100% accuracy. Not even he could do that. So Tammy, you've been using the internet for outreach and, and building a community to teach people, it's been great. Um, the next step is, you can't be everywhere, so you use the internet, but what about virtual reality? Oculus Rift, have you played with any of this stuff? Uh, not yet, but I plan on soon, yes. You you enticed by that? Uh, yes, yes, I'm specifically excited about Microsoft HoloLens, yeah. Cool, virtual tan may yeah. on the whiteboard? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can be everywhere that way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what's the coolest language right now for you? I mean, obviously, you're, it, we heard Swift on stage, you did the iOS app. What are, what are some of the cool things? That you're like uh, well, right now. first of all, I've developed uh, Ask Tanme in Python and Java for the back end, uh, and HTML for the interface, and PHP for the interface and back end bridge. Uh, but the most interesting language that I've ever used really is Swift, uh, first of all. Uh, second, I'd say, as a close second, is Java because of its portability. You create something on Linux, and it would almost easily work on Windows and Mac as well. Java is uh, a good language, yeah. it's good for heavy lifting things. Yeah. How about visualization? Are you thinking anything about rich media at all and visualization? Uh, I'm, uh, could you be a bit more specific about that? You got the data, you have the Swift app, so you have the mobile. Yes. Visualizing other media techniques with the, with the t with math and with your, tr with your developers. What are you using for visualization, graphics? Uh, oh, for graphics. Uh, well, I'm not actually a graphic designer. I tend to focus uh, more on the uh, programming side of things, but I do develop uh, the user interface. Uh, for example, uh, I actually had another app accepted the, uh, a few days ago, a goal-setting app, uh, for which I had to design the user interface, but then uh, the sort of uh, graphics themselves, uh, I don't usually Yeah, not hardcore those. graphics, yeah. but using other libraries. Yes. Tenme, you mentioned uh, Swift is your favorite language. Yes. What's so alluring about it from a developer's perspective? Uh, the syntax is great, and it's really powerful, which is what I love about Swift. So it's easy and, and, and powerful. Yes, exactly. So um, you're from Toronto, right? Yes. Um, sorry, Toronto. Yeah. That's how we say it, right? So is there a big developer community there? I, I know there is a, a, a growing uh, one, but... Sorry. Uh, well... Uh, I, ha I don't really uh, meet with people in person and develop together. Uh, I'm more of an independent developer right oh. now. Uh, but I do definitely help people one-to-one -one on my YouTube channel uh, with really any pr questions or problems they have. Uh, and if you'd like to see my YouTube channel, of course, it's called Tanmay Bakshi. Uh, How do I get to it, sorry? Uh, yes, my name. It's called Tanmay Bakshi, which is my name. Yes, okay. You can Google it up and you'll find it. Uh, I teach stuff like computing, programming, algorithms, lots of math and science. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so actually, if you'd like an example, uh, a few days ago, uh, actually, uh, another app uh, called Speak for Handicapped was accepted into the iOS App Store. Uh, and I developed that with Vaughn Clement, uh, which is one of my, who is one of my subscribers. Uh, and so, yeah, it took us a few months of hard work, uh, and we were able to and get it. And what's the name of that app again? Speak for Handicapped. Speak for it handicapped. allows them to essentially speak. So I'm going to ask you the question. So, um, 
A lot of, well, I have four kids, two are uh, about your age, um, and they are naturally attracted to programming. Okay. It's fun, it's like sports, yeah. it's, you know, it's really fun for them. Yeah. And so, they, but a lot of them don't know how to, where to start. You had, you were lucky, you, you fell right into it at five. Mm -hmm. You get that a lot. Of, I noticed you get a lot of questions on your on your YouTube channel around that. You people are excited for your next video, but for the folks that are now seeing you and and, and, and want to get in, mm -hmm. they might be a little scared. Can you share what you've learned well, and what advice would you give yeah. folks? Uh, what I'd recommend is start out slow. Uh, start doing some stuff in programming. Don't immediately get into the harder sort of things. Start with really simple applications and don't develop when you need to. Develop when you want to, essentially. Uh, pro programming things randomly. For example, I learned Swift uh, like pretty much entirely due to the fact that, first of all, I'm writing a book on it. Uh, it's uh, for iOS app developers for beginners. Uh, and also, because I would just program in stuff randomly, uh, I didn't wait for me to need to program in something or for if I wanted to make an iOS app in order to program in something. So for one day I'd create a prime number checker, Fibonacci number generator, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and so just randomly anything, uh, I'd sometimes even create a YouTube video on it to help people. Uh, you could also use, again, any YouTube channel uh, as a sort of a place to learn programming. Uh, and so uh, use all the internet as a resource. Every developer has to pull those late nights and sometimes you pull up to pull an all-nighter. Have you pulled an all-nighter coding? Yes, once. <laughs> Dad's not happy about that. <laughs> Trouble for that. Uh, <laughs> snuck, he, he was doing it under the covers. Um, but also developers also struggle sometimes on, the, on a really hard problem and then the satisfaction of cracking the code or breaking through. Can you give us an example where you were pulling your hair out, you were really focused on the problem, you were kind of thrashing through it, and you made it through. Yes, actually, many I could give you, but the one that I remember most is during Ask Tanway's development. Uh, at first, I was using the multiprocessing library in Python uh, in order to s send multiple queries to relationship extraction at once. Uh, but then what happened, I don't know whether it was a memory management issue or something, but after, let's say, five queries, the sixth one would be painfully slow. Uh, then I tried out the threading library. Why not? Uh, and so next, after around 10 queries, the 11th one would be painfully slow. Again, I have no idea why. Uh, then, uh, now this was in Python, and so what I decided to do was maybe reprogram it for threading in Java, and then have Python communicate with Java, uh, yeah, and so what I did is I learned Java in a day because I hadn't ever touched that before. Because again, once you learn programming basics, it's really easy to move to another language. And Swift and Python, uh, they're actually Swift in general is quite similar to Java, uh, except Java's a little bit simpler. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I learned Java in a day. The next day, I programmed in uh, a simple uh, relationship extraction threading module, uh, made a jar out of it, and let Python communicate with the jar. Uh, and so, after that, the glitch was mostly fixed. So was Python not threading properly, or you, I, you I could never got to the problem? I, I was not able to find out what the problem was, but I mean. Yeah. So what kind of machine do you run? Obviously, it's like you're driving the car, multi-threading, you got a lot of processors. How many cores? What uh, kind of machine do you yeah. have under your Actually, desk? What's your a, local host a like? I have a 27-inch 5K Retina iMac uh, with 64 gigs of RAM uh, and four cores. I mean, eight, uh, yeah, four cores, uh, then hyper-threaded eight cores um, until i7. And that's good for you right now? Yeah, for yeah, now. You're happy with it? Yeah. <laughs> How about any external in the cloud? Any, uh, obviously, SSD? Uh, I don't, actually, I do have a website, of course, but then uh, I don't really host anything online yet because I don't have a need for it yet. But then when I'm going to make Ask Tanway public, of course, then I'm going to need a, quite a powerful server in order to run it. So the industry needs your help. Have you thought about rewriting the Linux kernel? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, uh, a few years ago, I was, I didn't ha really have anything to do, so that's why I started YouTube. But before that, I actually uh, was really interested in operating systems. Uh, I coded my little own little Hello World operating system in assembly, uh, which could run on, uh, I forgot the architecture it runs on, uh, but uh, it was quite interesting. Uh, but then again, after that, my YouTube, I uh, started to take that more seriously, and I didn't really have enough time to 
do that. Any projects you're working on now that excite you that you can share with us? Maybe solving the speed of light problem or any? Uh, any? Uh, well, <laughs> actually, uh, mainly right now I've been working on Ask Tammy, but I do have many other applications that I'm working on, uh, including uh, an app that could help university students and developers uh, with, uh, essentially, it's an algorithm lookup. If you'd like an algorithm that can help you do pathfinding, for example, you just put in pathfinding uh, as a tag and some other things, uh, and then it'll give you a star, dice, uh, other sort of algorithms, uh, and it uses the concept insight service of Watson. I've also made a tweet classifier uh, where you can uh, say, like, let's say uh, there's a hashtag on Twitter where there are two separate sort of things that you could talk about. For example, the hashtag SwiftLang uh, on Twitter uh, at when Swift was open sourced, uh, it was there were two different types of people just talking about Swift in general, like nothing ever happened, or they're talking about open sourcing. Let's say you wanted to see only news about Swift being open sourced. Well then, you give Watson some examples of tweets that you like and tweets that you don't like, and then uh, eventually it would be able to uh, tell you uh, or give you tweets that only you like. So, so very a recommendation high engine on uh, context. Yes, exactly. And it uses the natural language classifier service. So talk about social media. I mean, you're at your age, and what you've been through and what you know technically, you have a good visit, uh, understanding of operating systems, coding, and all the principles of computer science. But as it gets more complicated with social media, people are all connected. What's your view of the future going to be? I mean, is it is algorithms going to solve the problem? What do you think about the future? How do you think about it uh, 10 years out? Well, first of all, the world needs more programmers. Uh, and I think uh, more sort of algorithms and natural language processing are the main sort of topics that uh, we're going to need to focus on later. Have you ever been to Silicon Valley? Uh, yes, but... Uh, so yes. Not, not in a developer capacity, yeah. just sort of visiting. Would yeah. you like to sort of visit there yes, you know, more? Yes, I would definitely. Spend time with some yeah. of your... Your colleagues in the heart of <laughs> development yeah. land. John's out there. Who are your idols? Um, Steve Jobs, Tim Cook, Bill Gates. How about like uh, from a uh, software developer perspective, any um, cult following people you love, like some of the early guys, coders, any names that, that uh, pop to mind? Uh, not that no. popped to my mind immediately. Steve Jobs. Yeah, I'm always Are you Steve composing Jobs. the orchestra? <laughs> He's running the orchestra. He, yeah. he was a good product guy. Yeah. So if you can invent a product right now on the cube, what would it be? It would be mostly I want sort of a QA system with almost 100% accuracy. That would be best. Be nice, Dave. We have a hologram right here. We have guests interface with us. That would be cool. <laughs> How about that? No, I, too hard. Okay. Would you like to come to work for us and develop that? Okay. <laughs> We'd love to have you. Yeah. Well, I want to congratulate you on being the youngest ever Cube alum. We have this oh, little community okay. of Cube, you know, alumni, and you are the youngest ever. So congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Really okay. fantastic. A very That's impressive, great. you know, young man, and uh, okay. really very an excited to watch you're your future. You're an inspiration to all, and congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for okay. coming on the Cube. Thanks for spending the time. Yeah, uh, okay. This is the Cube bringing you all the action here. Ten May doing some great stuff. He's very young, very fluent, understands threading, understands coding, and this is the future. You know, born in born in code. That's the, that's the future developers, and, and we hope to see more great software developers come on the market, the data, the analytics, and of course, Watson's right there with you along the way. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. We'll be right back with more CUBE coverage here, exclusive coverage at IBM Interconnect 2016. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Be right back. <laughs>